Hi, friends. Hello, the world. Welcome to this episode of Complaint Free Life. And with you, your host, Asel Ormonova. As you can probably hear, I have a bit of a weird, different voice, but this is due to sickness. So I hope that you won't mind hearing me anyway. <laughs> Recently, I did a, um, a video for my friends in Italy, in Italian, uh, singing in Italian and Kyrgyz. And somehow my voice was very useful in that context. So I thought I should uh, maybe try singing. Anyway, so today's podcast is about life outside of a career job that I have been talking to you about uh, for every month since I started my journey as a life coach this year, where I left my career job and I thought, um, for any of um, you considering doing this, uh, this is something to um, uh, think about, or these are the challenges and successes you may encounter. Of course, everyone's journey is different, but I thought I would nevertheless share my um, inner uh, struggles as well as successes as I go and build the, this practice. So I will be talking about November, November month and November months I find was the month that was a family month when I returned from Europe uh, to my village. So um, I just want you to imagine uh, uh, be, me being uh, in other countries and traveling and everything and then coming back to my village. Um, a small village on the border with Uzbekistan and in a house that I left um, uh, 20 years ago. Uh, so I left my village to work and study uh, 20 years ago. So being back with my mom was amazing. At the same time, uh, challenging because of the conditions uh, that the village is in. So um, not having a shower, not having uh, amenities and facilities that I'm so used to was obviously so difficult to um, readjust, but everything is possible obviously in life. So I have readjusted and spent almost a month um, uh, with my mom uh, and now I am uh, in Bishkek, in the capital, as you can see in my hotel room, uh, A, enjoying a shower opportunity, <laughs> and B, uh, enjoying meeting friends, and also um, on the way to Kiev to meet um, my loved ones um, and friends. So if anyone in Kiev uh, would love to meet me, I'm so happy, and I'll be delighted to do that. So uh, successes this month uh, or the months of November have been that uh, I have the chance to spend more time with my mom and also um, see her uh, improve her health a bit. And, and as I was sick, um, my mom also even prepared me plov, which was just such an amazing thing to see because considering how we were considering. So we even bought a wheelchair this summer, uh, thinking that she wouldn't walk anymore and not be able to be mobile and do all the things. And now she's recovering and even um, a prepared cloth in, uh, I don't know, a decade time was so uh, great to see. So I'm so happy about that. So um, medicine does, make wonder together with my mom's resilience. I was also help, um, able to help uh, two family members uh, start their own businesses and uh, um, uh, generating income. So I was, um, um, yeah, so I was happy to see that I could use my coaching uh, skills also with my family members. Um, and that was also very nice. And I have started my um, group coaching program specifically for Kyrgyzstan. And in three languages, Kyrgyz, Russian, and English, interestingly. So 
the reason why I wanted to do a specific one for Kyrgyzstan for several reasons. One of the main ones was that I wanted to um, do this contribution to my uh, own country and also to help those people um, achieve their goals um, who were in similar situations that who are in similar situations that I was um, back uh, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. So that's why I really felt like I understood their pain and I understood what they're going through and I really wanted to help them. So um, this work I considered a, um, a nice uh, hobby, an addition, a bonus that I can do uh, for Kyrgyzstan. So that's why I'm doing this. And also I wanted to readjust things in the way that is understandable, in the way that is very tangible for people to apply. So that's why I thought of doing a specific group, group program for uh, Kyrgyzstan um, people. And that uh, has been launched and it's called I Promise uh, Only in Kyrgyz, which is Sözberem. So I've been uh, designing that and doing that and uh, meeting lots of students um, back in my university, uh, back in my school as well to tell them that I can do this and I can help them uh, achieve goals that they um, consider very difficult to achieve or not possible. So that's why I'm trying to show them that if I can do it um, with a background of someone who is from a village, who used to take care of cows and uh, agriculture and uh, and yet at the same time uh, achieving all the goals of um, being around the globe in 50 countries I've counted in speaking seven languages and having the career in the UN and doing all the amazing work with refugees and now doing coaching so I think everyone else can do it too so that's why this is what I'm doing and it's it's the project that um, uh, I find is very, um, yeah, rewarding, exciting, and also so much fun to do that with um, students. So I'm looking forward to it, how it goes. Today is the first session that we're starting. And I have also launched or rather started a group coaching program for a group of entrepreneurs in the US. Um, and I had my uh, uh, first session last, um, so in November, and I will be doing a monthly and I'm also super stoked about it because I first started engaging with them uh, as a speaker and uh, they seem to have liked uh, a lot of what we had discussed. So that's why it turned into a group coaching. So I'm very happy that I can do that. And um, I have another uh, group coaching uh, being baked uh, with um, social workers in Texas. So uh, let's see how that's going to go, but I'm also super stoked that I can do that. Um, and by the way, I have also a great, uh, news that I in November I have been invited to a speaking event uh, at a symposium, um, Learn It Live, and uh, they we've talked about it how it's going to go. It's going to be in January online, um, and uh, it's uh, with the audience of um, half a million people. Uh, I'm assuming they are all not going to be at the event at once, but. Uh, they say that they have the subscribers and other audiences um, and um, I could really uh, talk to them about a particular topic um, close to my heart and I will be talking about making decisions so I'm super excited about that as well um, I have been exploring more of the speaking events lately so that's why this seems to be a great opportunity so I have said everything for that, and it's going to be in January. So the other thing that I have uh, been so proud recently is that I, um, as you know, that I coach people in 
uh, well, I used to mostly coach people in English, uh, Russian, and German. And now with my Kyrgyzstan project, I will be doing it in Kyrgyz as well, uh, which uh, is a bit strange uh, because I haven't really used my mother tongue for anything but to talk to my mom. So that's why <laughs> doing it and coaching people is going to be a challenge, yet also a very exciting. And I was um, able to coach someone uh, as a client, uh, a Spanish client, just coach in Spanish. Now I know that there are still some limitations to it, yet I'm still very excited that I was able to do that. And uh, I feel like uh, a bit more practice I can get to um, a proper way of coaching where I don't feel the limitations anymore. So Hopefully I will add more and uh, my Italian is being baked as you know that I, I think I am in the position now to speak well and I just need to find uh, an Italian speaking client to practice doing it in Italian as well. So let's see. Now these were the obviously all the good news uh, of what has been happening and the, the challenging news. <laughs> that obviously my brain can't live without uh, is, well, first uh, November was also the month that I was sick and most of my family was sick uh, and seeing my brother hospitalized was also very shocking and difficult uh, thing to experience. So uh, I find that November month was the month where everyone was somehow trying to recover uh, from different types of illnesses and uh, trying to support each other in um, uh, hospitals and home somehow it was a very challenging one and also being in bed and not doing anything and at the same time thinking oh no what about my practice how it's going to go and all this drama in my head around um uh, being sick and uh, not being able to do all the things that I usually do was very challenging. And also the other challenge that I have noticed um, being in the village was that uh, trying not to judge people for how they behave and what they do and how they suffer in me wanting to coach them over on all the things that are going on at the same time knowing that I can't really do that and I don't want to do that um, I try to not coach my family unless they ask for it well I shouldn't say ask for it but unless they ask for specific advice or specific question and then I uh, try to coach on them but otherwise I don't do that but just seeing my family members um, interacting with their children and, um, and saying that uh, their children should be doing this and that and uh, they're not doing this and therefore they're suffering and uh, feeling like they're failure or feeling like that they haven't done a good job or they're not, their children are not doing what they're supposed to. So uh, I see a lot of suffering coming from uh, intervening or trying to control the children or intervening in their lives and therefore um, feeling like this is causing them suffering and seeing that is not easy and not intervening and not judging is another challenge that I find is very difficult to do. And um, sometimes I try to um, just um, coach myself around it and say that, yes, I understand that I want to coach everyone. And uh, I understand that my brain just wants to tell everyone what the solution is. <laughs> At the same time, it can't work and people need to figure out this for themselves, even though I can see that um, these are the challenges that they're experiencing. The other one that uh, kept coming up in November, the challenge is the worry, uh, worry of um, uh, seeing my savings dwindling and also um, uh, money related topics um, because 
Um, obviously, I have uh, helped uh, my uh, these two relatives uh, help with their income generating activities. And that was um, with my uh, financial assistance. And then therefore uh, having this drama of how can you um, help people uh, with these, uh, a lot of uh, money spending when you could, when you are building your own business and when you are um, um, living on your savings and not really uh, touching your um, practice money. So a lot of that uh, topic it has been coming up. Um, and at the same time, I was uh, coaching myself around uh, and getting coached around how this is actually the, the, the test or the, um, the time when I need to show myself how much I trust myself, no matter what the numbers are in my savings. And uh, this is the good, way of for me uh, show that how much my trust is strong and I have also noticed that my trust is there but um, above the trust somehow so I feel like there is the deep trust in myself and in what I can do and what I know and what I do and I love doing but there is on the surface level certain um, fluctuations of, oh, maybe you can't really, or maybe um, this should be different. Maybe you should change something and all of this stuff that's going on. But I always calm myself and I tell myself that um, I am building the practice to go uh, to the point where I refill all of these savings, right? And and savings are not there to give me a security. It's my trust in myself that gives me security in doing what I do and achieving all the um, results that I want. So that has been um, a challenging and I assume that for anyone who's uh, in the same uh, situation or uh, will come to the same situation um, expected that uh, money drama will come out so therefore um, expect also how you want to interact uh, and uh, counteract it so my way of counteracting it is not avoiding it and not uh, trying to suppress and say oh no no I don't want to think about it or want to see it rather um, looking at all of those thoughts and saying that how can I in this moment show myself that I really trust myself and when I really believe that I trust myself to do what I want and um, achieve all the results I want then how do I act and then start acting from there. So um, the other challenge that kept uh, uh, coming up that I think now I have really finally cracked it or have learned my lesson from it is having difficult conversations with loved ones, right? So I know that we talk a lot, well, at least in my world of coaching, we talk a lot about how to have uh, co difficult conversations, excuse me, with uh, co-workers or with people uh, at workplace, but um, really having that conversation with loved ones where emotions are all high and, um, and it's so easy to avoid it. And I have finally realized uh, one thing for myself at least is, which I have been talking about it in my post is that my brain believed before that having difficult conversation is easier to avoid than having it. And I have considered both options and I have been avoiding uh, some of that conversation in the past and I'm actually also good in avoiding certain things obviously. Um, this is not a problem, but then I realized that that um, actually having that conversation is easier or rather more beneficial than not having it at all or avoiding it. Because when we avoid it, we 
um, tend to delay things. We keep, keep thinking about it. We keep making it mean worse things than it actually could be. So therefore, avoiding it may create a lot of this um, noise, a lot of this uh, consequences that are not desirable, possibly, while having it is like um, looking at it and discussing through it, experiencing discomfort, experiencing uh, emotions that you don't really want to normally experience, but you do that anyway, you go through it and go to the other tunnel. And then afterwards, even though you may not be able to say, oh, yay, I'm, um, it's one of the great conversations. No, but you are able to say, I have been able to go through it. I didn't hide, I hide from it. I didn't avoid it. I went through it and I faced it and I have encountered these. These were my problems. These were the positive parts of the conversation that helped me come to a solution. So that's why if you want to check out my uh, post on this, I highly recommend it. But anyway, this is one of the breakthroughs that I have finally achieved. And I feel like I am good, or rather I am more courageous now to face difficult conversations than ever before. So this is what I have in November. And, um, and now the December is coming, which is the last month of this year. And uh, this will be the month where we will be all, um, or maybe not all, but many of us will be uh, asking ourselves how the year went and how it did and what happened, what didn't, and how we want to do things differently. So that's why I'm also looking forward to share the next month adventures and also lessons of the whole year. So my dears, thank you so much for uh, showing your interest in my life outside of a career job. And I will be looking forward to talking to you soon. Have a wonderful Friday and weekend. Bye.